It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Two important teams here today vying for the chance to move on to the semifinals. We're going to meet a team from Laurel and one from Whitehall. Whitehall's team, yes, the defending champions for this school year, but Laurel is coming up fast. We're going to get into our game here in just a moment. Just remind you, this is our 36th year on the air here with Science Bowl, and we keep the same categories we've always had, our typical six categories with a 5, a 15, and a 25-point question in each one. So let's meet that team from Laurel Elementary School. Let's say hello to Aman. Hey, Aman, wave to everybody at home there. Aman is a great player. Joined by Axel. Axel, good wave, nice thumbs up. Joining them is McKenna. McKenna, nice to have you back, McKenna. Also a terrific player. All right, if you are ready, let's begin our game with the Green Things category. Here's a Green Things question for five boys. Pay attention. Because bees, honeybees, are most active in the morning. What distinctive plants with their saucer-sized flowers always face east in the morning. What do you guys think? Huh? Axel, do you? <laughs> Sunflowers are quite bigger than roses. Yeah, they're bigger than roses. We're talking about sunflowers. Sunflowers are saucer size. And the sun rises in the east, which is why they face the east in the morning, you know. And then they turn as the sun goes through the day. They're amazing. All right, let's get the next one here for 15 points in green things. Plant scientists have been experimenting with this P, as in Paul, this P initial substance for its supposed role in increasing crop yields. It's the same substance, the same name as the substance, that is the liquid part of your blood. What do you think? What do you guys think? If you know the name of the liquid part of your blood, you know the name of this P initial substance. Maybe you've heard of plasma. Plasma is the stuff. And sometimes if you donate blood, you can donate just your plasma, and then they give you back your red, your red and white blood cells. All right, for 25 points. This is kind of a trick question. Listen carefully, because everybody thinks they know this. It's now possible. How many of you like to eat chocolate? Do you like chocolate as much as I do? Oh, my gosh. Hershey's bars and Cadbury bars and all of them. It's now possible to trace which of these kinds of trees the chocolate in your chocolate bar came from. Cacao trees? So what kinds of trees produce chocolate? Be careful. Be careful. Go ahead. Is it the cacao? Talk among yourselves. The cocoa tree? Hmm. Axel, do you think? Uh, is it a cacao tree? Okay. Say it again, Axel. Cacao trees. Cacao trees is absolutely right. Some people say cocoa trees, and cocoa is the ground up seeds that come from the cacao tree. Nice work there, Axel. You got yourself 25 points. Nice work for your green things category. Let's go to the zoo. The near, for five points, the near extinction of a fish known as the snail darter was the reason our country, America, passed this act that seeks to preserve creatures that are disappearing fast. It's like an act the government like, is doing. It's like a formal kind of legislation. What act seeks to preserve creatures that are fast disappearing? It has to be some kind of act from, like, from the past. I know you've heard this before. The Endangered Species Act. <gasps> Endangered Species. 
you know, a lot of creatures there on the edge. You know, there are just a few of them left, a few northern rhinos left, just a few whooping cranes. So the Endangered Species Act helps to keep alive and propagate those that are still left. Let's go to 15 points in the zoo and let's show you a picture. Kind of disgusting, kind of disgusting. This is a spider, a crab spider, a bird dung crab spider. Nasty, it looks like bird poop on the top of it, but it's natural. Bird dung crab spiders evolved their smelly masquerade to deter predators, but they also use it to do this. Camouflage? Mm, camouflage, camouflage. Um, yes, we will accept that. It will, de well, wait a minute, it deters predators. That's what camouflage is. So no, we, we, need, we need something else. We've already determined that it will deter predators. Photosynthesis? That's what plant, that's the process of plants getting their food. That's not photosynthesis. You know, uh, if you know anything about poop or bird dung, you know it smells. So what this does, it will attract flies so that the spider can eat the flies. So it's attracting food as well as deterring predators as is in a masquerade. All right, that was, you, you did a nice job with that. Let's go on to 25 points. I like this question. Zoo prayed for 25. Back in 1799, the year 1799, a British zoologist by the name of George Shaw saw this animal in Australia. Start thinking about Australian animals now, Axel and McKenna and Amon. So listen to what else I have to say. Start thinking about animals in Australia. This zoologist saw this animal on Australia and he looked for stitches because it looked like Frankenstein had sewn it together from various body parts. Koalas? Do they look like the Frankenstein? Do kangaroos look like that? Are camels Australian? No. I don't think so. They, they live in the desert. I don't think Australia has a desert. No. When I tell you the name, you'll probably go, oh, I should have thought of it. Do you know what a duckbill platypus is? It's an animal that looks like a beaver. It's got the beak of a duck. It's got the feet of a beaver and claws. It looks like it's all different animals put together. So platypus was your answer there. Let's go to your last three questions here in the open run, the body systems for five points. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station are experimenting with microcrystals, little crystals, to see how their structure is similar to the stones that often form in these renal, R-E-N-A-L, in these renal organs in your body. I hope they don't form in your body, but sometimes they do. Stones that form in what renal organs? Gall stones. Gall bladders and kidneys. You have to choose which one you want. Mm, should we do gallbladder? Gallbladder? Oh, I wish you'd gone the other direction because renal means kidney. Kidney stones is the answer there. Let's go to 15 points in body system. Billy Rubin and Billy Verdon sound like two kids on your baseball team. They're actually the names of two pigments found in your body's bile juice. Billy Verdon is a green pigment. Billy Rubin is this color pigment. So one has to be chlorophyll because I heard it's a green. It's found in plants, so it's green. So what could the second one be? So Billy Verdon is green because Verd, V-E-R-D, is a prefix that means green. Billy Rubin is a pigment that is this color because if you think Rubin, I wanted you to think ruby, which is a red stone. So it is a red pigment there. Let's try the last question in this opening round here. For 25 points in the body system, if someone is suffering from sickle cell 
anemia, sickle cell anemia. What cells are actually sickled, shaped like a sickle? What cells are actually sickled? The white ones or the red ones? Because there's two. I like how you're thinking there, Amon. Uh, which one? Help her out, guys. She's there all by herself. Tell her which ones you think it is. What do you think, Axel? White blood cells. Oh, I wish you had chosen red. It's the red blood cells, the ones that pick up the oxygen. And in sickle cell, they pile up, they dam up inside your blood vessels. That's why it causes, it causes so much pain. All right, uh, we checked, and you did say sunflowers for the first green thing question. So we give you those five points, and you end the opening round here. Laurel with 80 points. We'll see you again in a few moments. Good luck. All right, it is now time to meet that team from Whitehall. Like Laurel, they won their previous game, and they're here today vying for the chance to move on to the semifinals. Let's meet that team from Whitehall. Let's say hello to Lucas. Hey, Lucas. Wave to everybody, if you would, please. Wearing his T-shirt that says the Science Bowl team, 2021-22, from Whitehall. Say hello to Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Good to have you back. I like it. It looks like Christmas lights back there, too. You're very festive. I like that. And... Also a terrific player, Sebastian. Sebastian, good to have you back again. Wave to everybody. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Good to have you here. If you're ready, let's begin. Let's get your green things questions going for five points. Here it is. Cactus flowers, which bloom at night and have a strong aroma, also have a sweet nectar that is very dilute, which makes it easier for visiting bats to drink it up so that the bats can do what for the cactus in return. Pollinate. Pollinate, that's right. There's no free lunch in this life. So the cactus says, all right, we're going to give you lunch. You pollinate us. Good answer. Good five points to start your game. Let's go to green things for 10, 15 points. It's a visual. Let's have a look at a newly discovered plant species in Vietnam. This new plant species that is like the Venus flytrap and the sundew captures and eats animals making it one of these in the food chain. Predators? Predator Predators? is fine. Yeah. Predator or a carnivore or a consumer, primary, or a, a, yes, a primary consumer. Good. Predator will get you the 15 mm -hmm. points. All right, for 25 points in green things. If you dissect a plant's stem and notice parts that look like straws, that are filled with a sweet liquid, you have found the vas this vascular tissue. Vascular, like, um... Vascular, like... Isn't vascular, like, um, kind of like breathing or something like that? Maybe. I yeah, think I think might... vascular is like the plant has a nervous system. Mm. Yeah, mm. so do you think it might be like xylem or phloem? Maybe? Yeah, I'm like, what Yeah, I it? think the xylem trans... Uh, xylem I think the xylem does the water carrying. Yeah. Yes, it's the xylem. So xylem? Yeah, it's I remember the other that one, guys. Right. Lucas, you had the great idea. Flo it's the phloem. Flo the phloem is the one that we wanted there. Good try. Could have gotten 25 points. Let's get them in the zoo. Let's go to the zoo for five points. I thought I said... I thought I said phloem. Did you say phloem or did you say xylem and agree with uh, Ashley? Um, we said xylem. You said xylem. I thought I heard xylem yeah. first. And okay. when you said and when you said the answer, I quickly changed my mind to phloem. Yeah. Okay. Well, a, a little sooner next time. All right. Zoop okay. for five points. The fast pace of modern life is often compared to a race among these rodents. Oh, uh, rat? rat? Yeah, rat. Rats? Yeah, the yeah, rat rats. race. We're all involved in the rat race for 15 points. Everybody heard this and they couldn't believe it. People in Upper Marlboro were calling the police in September to report seeing a herd of these equines that are more common on the African plains. African plains. Herd equines. 
We didn't cover So we know it. that, can you repeat the question? No, I can't, nope. Okay, so um, on the, they said on the African Plains, and they said an upper Mar uh, Marlboro. So, hmm. an animal that would be more commonly found in the African, African Plains. Plains. Yeah. All right, Lucas, do you have a guess for me? Zebras? Zebras it is. That was all over the news. Oh. Yeah. There were the, a herd of zebras running around Prince George's County. People, they couldn't believe their eyes. And some of them apparently got trapped and uh, expired, which was very sad. But I think some of them are, some of them may still be out there. All right, let's go to 25 points in uh, Zoo Parade. Even though some snakes, like rattlesnakes, bear live young, the babies that are hatched actually come from eggs that are retained within the snake, meaning that unlike in mammals, there is, there is no P initial condition, uh, connection between the young and the parent, P as in Paul. What P initial con connection is not present in baby snakes between them and their parents since they actually come from eggs that are hatched within the body. I think it's the pancreas. Yeah. Oh, like, um, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Um, Lucas, maybe, I, thought, I thought I heard you say something. Nope. Oh, I said uh, pancreas. Pancreas is, is a good guess. It's called the placenta. The placenta, the connection between a mammal and its baby. You don't see a placenta in, in egg layers at all. All right, let's go to the body system questions for five points here. Your last three before we take our first break. If someone is crowding you in an elevator or sitting too close to you in a movie, you might say to that person, give me some of this room, a joint that you might have to use to remind them. Elbow? Elbow. It might be Give elbow. me some elbow room. Give me some elbow room. You know, you can use them to kind of uh -huh. give like yourself a little extra room there. Okay. Multiple choice body assistance for 15. Multiple choice. If you suffer from monochromancy, M-O-N-O-C-H-R-O-M-A-C-Y, monochromancy, can you hear only one range of sounds? see no colors at all, or perceive just one kind of taste, usually sweet? Um, um mono equal, um, means like mono hearing. one, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. So, so like the, the, fir the first one. hear only one one, like, like of one frequency or type of sound. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Lucas, let's hear it. Um. It was, I believe, here, you can only hear one kind of sound through your ear. One kind of sound. Uh, mono may be associated with audio, and I like that connection, but mono means one. Mm -hmm. Mono means one. One chromancy, chromatic refers to colors, which means you can't see any colors at all. Someone who's monochromatic does only sees in shades of gray. Let's try body assistance for 25 points. If someone's heart is beating too fast or irregularly, they could have AFib, A-F-I-B, which is an acronym. It's caused by problems in these upper chambers of your heart. Name those upper chambers. Upper chambers. Uh, upper chambers in your heart. Um, there's um, I forgot the name for it. Wait. I can't. I think. Remember. Is it art? I think. I think. Hmm. I can't remember if those are with your lungs or your heart. It's upper I think. Chamber of your heart, so it has wait. To be upper, right? Wait. Hold on. I think two of the chambers in your heart are called the left and right atrium. The atrium. Yeah. So. That sounds right. Yeah. So Lucas, the, what are you gonna yeah. go with? The atrium. Lucas, let's hear you say it nice and loud, so we know exactly what you're saying. Atrium. Atrium it is. Atrium or oracles. That's correct. Thank wow. you, Ashley, for your help on that. 
All right, Whitehall, with those eight trio, that means you end the opening round with 120 points. Nice work. We'll see you again in a couple minutes. All right, it is now time to talk to the players from Laurel Elementary School. And yeah, you might have met them before. They are a wonderful group of kids, and they're trying their hardest here today. Some tough questions. They're tough competitors, and uh, they're all very young. They're all very young, and they're acquitting themselves so well. Let's talk, to start with Amon, our captain. Amon, good to have you back here. How do you know so much science? I am. Pay attention to what the teacher says and, like, uh, try to remember everything. Absolutely, yes, because the teachers, they're a font of knowledge. They're like living Wikipedia sometimes. They have all the answers, most, and if they don't, they tell you how to find them. You're doing a nice job. Keep it up in the second half. Let's talk to Axel. Hey, Axel, welcome back. Uh, how'd you know about the, uh, Axel, how'd you know about the cacao tree? I... I always go outside and, and observe stuff, and I go online a lot of times and I see some cacao trees. Yeah, which, yeah. They're amazing because those big seed pods, and they seem to grow right out of the trunk there. Are you a chocolate fan? Do you like chocolate? Yes. Yeah, you don't seem too enthused about that. Yeah? All right. Good luck in the second half here. Let's go to McKenna. Hey, McKenna. Welcome back. Hi. To Hey, I like your pink mask. You look good Thank today. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, what do you like about this show? Do you like being on in competitions? Yes. Yes. Do you play any other, do you play any kind of sports? Or are you involved in any other competitions other than this? I play softball. You do? Well, then you're an athlete, too. You're a scholar and an athlete. You're doing a nice job here today, and we hope you do well in the second half here. All right, we have nine questions for you yet, Laurel. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. Here we go. To get into a secret cave, genies have long uttered, open this, the most popularly eaten seat in America that's found on hamburger buns has that same name. Open, open. what? Open sesame. Open sesame, that's right, and the rock comes back, and they go inside, and sometimes they find treasure, and sometimes they don't. Good answer, good. Let's go to 15 points, and let's get physical. Y'all have things that have batteries, your remotes, you know, your phones. And when AA and AAA batteries die, batteries die, it's when the electrodes inside made of MG, chemical element, capital M, small g, and ZN, another chemical element, when they lose ions and the chemical reactions inside the batteries can't go on, they can't continue. For 15 points, tell me what chemical elements have the symbol Mg and Zn. He just said the Mg in the, what Mg is in the question. It's chemical element, right? So Mg's chemical element. There are two chemical elements in those batteries, in the top of the battery, the electrodes, Mg and Zn. Okay. So Mg is something else right now. Maybe you've seen, you've heard of something called zinc. Zinc, Z-I-N-C, that's the Zn. And magnesium is the Mg. All right, let's go to the 25-point question and let's get physical. To make something called elephant toothpaste. You might have seen it on TV. They pour all these chemicals together and it just bubbles up over the top and it goes all over the, it makes a big mess. It's a wonderful experiment to look at. To make elephant toothpaste, you mix together. Axel, listen to me, pay attention. I just need you for another 10 minutes here. Listen to what I'm saying. To make elephant toothpaste, you mix together hydrogen peroxide, liquid dish soap, like you use to wash the dishes, and food coloring in a graduated cylinder. As the hydrogen peroxide breaks down, it gives off what two substances? One, a liquid, and one, a gas. What liquid and gas come out when that toothpaste comes over the top of the cylinder? Huh? 
Liquid is like water. Water. You got the water. Now give me the gas. Okay, the gas. Could it, could it be carbon dioxide? No, no. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Hydrogen. Oh, you guys have been so close. It was water, and the gas is oxygen. Oxygen. Because <laughs> hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. Hydrogen, two hydrogens and two oxygens, so they, they recombine. You know, the, you get the water H2O, and then the oxygen by itself. All right, let's do potpourri for five points. Let's look at a picture. Boy, you've seen this a lot during the pandemic. Exergen temporal thermometers. They check your temperature often at the side of your forehead, like you're seeing happen here. They also use them to check your temperature at your wrist. That thermometer is detecting what kind of radiation, abbreviated IR. I think it could be heat. It is heat, but what's another name for it? With, this, uh, with the uh, abbreviation IR. Mm, can I be irrigation? Is that heat? Is that heat? Mm -hmm. What color do you think? Um, Maybe you've heard of infrared. Infrared is what heat is. Infrared. Mm -hmm. All right, let's type Pope Brief for 15 points. I want you to pretend that one of your eyeballs is talking to the other eyeball. One eyeball might say to the other, You've got some nerve, because they're talking about what nerve that goes from the back of the eyeball to the brain. Boy, you've got some nerve. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sight. What do you think, McKenna? This is. I, I bet you've. Got, when you go to get your glasses. Don't you go to an optometrist? And then sometimes you go to an ophthalmologist and the uh, nerve that goes from your eye to your brain is called the optic nerve, O-P-T-I-C. So anytime you hear optic, it refers to things referring to the eye or to vision. So just remember that for the future. All right, 25 points. Boy, this is something you don't like to happen. 25 points, you open your freezer, you wanna have dinner. There's a, been a pork chop in there for three months. You take it out and it's got freezer burn. Yep, because you didn't wrap it tight enough. Freezer burn is when food loses its moisture in the freezer. That process is not called evaporation, but this D initial term that refers to the loss of water. Dehydration? That's it, dehydration, perfect. 25 points. Let's go to Dateline. McKenna's excited. You should be excited. That was a good question. It was a tough one. Dateline for five points. Come on, let's get the last three. You can do it. While Sue was pretty big, Stan is even bigger. Both are fossils. Both sold for millions of dollars. They're both fossils of what well-known dinosaur whose name means King of the Tyrant Lizards. T-Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex, you got that right, T-Rex. See, I knew you could do it. Let's get the next one, 15 points, Dateline. A renowned Italian chemist and World War II survivor, his name was Primo Levi, you've never heard of him. He wrote a book about his life, and he chose as the title of his book this chart of chemical elements that was designed by the Russian Mendeleev. What is the name of that chart? with all the chemical elements on it. What? Say it again, nice and loud. Periodic? Periodic? Periodic chart? Periodic chart or periodic table, we will take that, yes indeed. All right, for 25 points, last question of the game. Let's get this one, let's go out with a, with a bang. A sample of Martian rock that they've nicknamed Rochette, Rochette the Rock, 
was recently obtained by a drill aboard the Mars rover, one of those spacecraft on Mars, with this P initial name, P like in Paul, a term that means never give up and just keep trying. A P word that means never give up, just keep trying. That's the name of the rover on Mars that obtained this rock sample rochette. You're doing it right now, this P thing. I know you've seen it. It's called Perseverance. The Perseverance rover is up on Mars, and you know it was named by a student about your age. NASA had a contest all over the country, and the name Perseverance won. All right, Laurel, your final score. You did well in that last round. It's 130 points. Let's see if it's going to be enough for you to win the game. Nice work, guys. And it is now time to bring back that team from Whitehall, and they had a great first round. Let's see if they can add their points in this second round here. Let's find out a little bit about our players. Let's go to Lucas. And Lucas, tell us the Lucas story. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, well, I like to read a lot, and I also like to play a lot of video games. Wow. And I can tell you're a reader because readers do so well on the science board, just as you're doing today. What do you want to do someday? Have you given it any thought yet? Be an astronaut, mostly. Wow, an astronaut, did you say? Yeah. Astronaut. Yeah, well, well, you know, we're, we're hoping Elon Musk wants us to go to Mars and NASA wants to go to Mars, and you're young enough to possibly be part of a crew that goes there or somewhere else because uh, the, yeah, the sky, the sky uh, not to put a, be a, pun, a pun on it, it's, it's, the sky's the limit. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go and talk to Sebastian. Hey, Sebastian. You're such a great clutch player. You seem to know an awful lot of science here. Are you envisioning a science career of any kind? Um, well, um, I get I um when I grow up, I kind of want to be um an ENT, like a doctor or something like that. Yeah. Um, so um when I found out that science school had um the category body systems, I thought I'd study um study on that um some. And you are certainly. Um, and you're proving you know a lot about that and a lot of other things too. So EMT, uh, well, you got to be a tough guy to do that, you know, and uh, you're demonstrating your toughness and your grit here today. Keep it up. We're proud of you. Let's talk to Ashley. Ashley, how did you know about the atria, the left and right atria? I remember we did a team research on uh, different systems in the body and I chose the circulatory system and the schoolhouse rock video I chose, it featured the chambers of the heart, all four of them. Wow. Well, see, that stuck with you and it got you the points. And uh, so you're, you're obviously very observant and you retain a lot of information. You're just a great student. What do you want to do someday? Have you thought about that? I want to be a neurobiologist or a scientist of some sort. Wonderful. Neurobiologist. We had a question on another game about Maya Bialik, who is the host of Jeopardy, and she was a neurobiologist. She's, uh, she played one on uh, the, the Big Bang Theory. So she's a, a great role model for young women and for everybody. All right, Whitehall, nine more questions for you. If you're set, let's go to Let's Get Physical. Four or five points. Here we go. People who wear makeup including lipstick and eyeliner, <laughs> should know that it contains the chemical element with the symbol F, which can lead to high cholesterol or thyroid disease. F is what element? F. It's not iron because that's F-E. Yeah, iron is F-E. F. And, and fluoride is F-L, right? Oh. Okay. Fluoride could also be F. Yeah. Hmm. You never know. What other F initial elements do we have? F. All right, Lucas, what you got? Um, fluoride, I guess. Fluoride it is. Yes, fluorine or fluoride. Fluorine is the actual element. We will take fluoride for 15 points and let's get physical. Good answer. It's been found that nocturnal insects may be harmed in their development by street lights that are LEDs, which stands for? Um, um, so LED. LED. Uh, you probably have some of the LED lights yourself. 
So I think the L might stand for lead or something, and the E might be electric. So, oh wait, light bulb, electric. Uh, I don't know. You're light getting there. Electric. It's called. It's L is light, E is emitting. D is emitting. diode. A light emitting diode is the correct answer there. Ah. You would have gotten 15 points. Let's try the 25 pointer and let's get physical. You know, a lot of people don't like scientific terms. I'm using a lot of them here too. So to avoid using technical terms and thus appeal to a general non-scientific audience, a chemistry professor recently wrote a book and he called these M initial structures that are made up of atoms one of these eensy weensy things that stuff is made of. Um, mo molecules? molecules? Molecules, that's it. Thank you, Sebastian. It is yeah. molecules. Good answer. Let's go to Propri for five ah. points. One of the favorite things to do in science class is to dissect owl pellets. These are the remains of the food that the owl has eaten. And if you dissect an owl pellet, which is coughed up, a lot of times you will find the skulls, the tiny skulls, of mammals from this most abundant order of mammals on Earth. Uh, rodents, I think? Rodents is right. Yeah, rodents. tiny rodent skulls are in there. All those little mice and lemmings and voles I've and actually, gerbils that they eat. Have you done I've that? Dissected. Yeah, I've done that no. before for Cub Scouts. It's I so think. cool. It's a really cool thing. Thanks, Lucas, for... Uh, confirming that it's it's neat. Let's go to the 15-point question in Popery. It's a visual question. And if you go to Australia, there is a monitor lizard here called a goanna, G-O-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. It is active goanna. during the day, but it sleeps at night. It's a multiple choice question. Since it is the opposite of a nocturnal animal, is it diapausal, diploidal, or diurnal? I remember it's called diurnal. Yeah, diurnal, diurnal. Diurnal is right, a creature that is most active during the day. Like us, of course, we have lights. That stuck with me from like a year ago. Ah, good, good, I'm glad you remembered that. All right, let's go to 25 points. You know, for scientists trying to see if bacteria in our guts are changed during space flight, are sending mice onto the space station and then saving their poop to compare with the poop of earthbound mice. Meaning that experimentally speaking, the space poop is the test and the earth poop is this. Test and so test and the one from Earth is the original one, so it has the to control or no. Um, uh, the space poop is the test, and the earth poop is the what? Lucas. Um, the not the experimental. No. The correct answer is control, because I heard it bandied about oh, that the answer. That's what I was looking for. The test and the control. Let's now go to Dateline for five points. It is now thought by archaeologists that Arabia that today is one big desert, was at one time green and lush and full of lakes that were used by these large African animals whose name means river horse. Uh, um, like elef um, elephants, right? Because um, uh, maybe. Elephant? elephant? They said on, oh. on large animals. River horse. Like, uh, elephants large animal, river, river horse. Yeah. Not elephant. Not elephant. Good try. Mm -hmm. Hippo is a prefix that means horse, and potamus means river, so it is a hippopotamus. Hippopotamus is what, is what uh, mm. translates into river horse. All right, let's try 15 points here in Dateline. Back on August 23rd, 2011, 10 years ago, you were very young, a strong earthquake struck us here in Washington registering 5.8 on the Richter scale, a scale that measures what M initialed variable that is synonymous with size. <clears throat> so when you say it was a 5.8, a 5.8 what? It is an M initial term that means the M same initial. thing as size. Uh, 
Do I think it would be mass? Huh? Like, it could also be magnitude. Oh. Yes, it There's is. There's a chance it could it be magnitude. magnitude. Yeah. It is oh. magnitude. Nicely done. Good for 15 points. Last question of the game. <laughs> Let's go out with a flourish here. You're doing really well, Whitehall. It seems that Aurora Borealis, the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, seems Aurora Boreali affect dendrochronology because in years when the aurora are strongest, these in Arctic circle trees are larger. Conifers or evergreens or evergreens, conifers, maybe coniferous trees. These, these in these in Arctic Circle trees are larger in years when the Aurora Borealis is the strongest. Aurora Borealis seems to affect dendrochronology. That's your clue. Mm -hmm. Dendro, do you know what dendrochronology is? Anyone? Um, um, what's the um, um dendro is like the pre is the prefix, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, dendro is a prefix. That's a tough and I one. think chrono has to do with time. So something about time. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Well, you're parsing this so well. Dendro and chronology, time. you came up with the right uh, prefixes and suffixes and what they meant. Uh, what does a tree form over time to let you know how old it is? Tree rings. The tree rings. rings are larger in years when the aurora is the strongest. All right, Whitehall, you end this game with 185 points. Will that be enough to take you onto the semifinals? We'll let you know in just a moment. Good playing, guys. Well, we knew it was going to be a good game, and it was that. Again, some difficult questions, and I hope you enjoyed as I did the way they talked to each other and figured out they're problem solvers. This is not about memorization and regurgitation. It's listening for clues, which they did so well today. I'm really proud of them. Our final tally today is Laurel, 130 points, Whitehall, 185. So Whitehall, congratulations to you. Also, congratulations to Laurel for making it this far in the competition. Whitehall, we will see you in the semifinals. We'll bring you back here on April the 19th. And Laurel, I want all of you to promise me you can come back and play this game again because you've got the experience, you got the smarts, you got the personality. I want to see you again. And we also are happy to see Miss Lee out there, who's the principal out there at Laurel. We have Miss Farmer, who is here, the principal at Whitehall. Mrs. Chilcott and Mr. Booker, the coaches at Whitehall, and Miss Whitteman, the coach at Laurel. And we have a, a couple of alternates out there. Emanata is still, I hope she is still out there with us. And uh, we appreciate all of you being here today. We appreciate you watching and hope you'll join us again for another edition of Science Bowl. And see if you can match wits with these outstanding young people, some of the elite students here in Prince George's County, the pride of our STEM program. Thank you all and uh, see you again. I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye. <laughs>